Do you ever stop to think about how many animals exist on our planet that you don't even know about? Because, believe me, there are many. So today we're diving into the mythical creatures that very few people even know exist. From a moth that may or may not be a hoax to a spiky little lizard with a whole bunch of names, let's discover 15 mythical creatures that exist in the wild. <sighs> Number 15. Venezuelan Poodle Moth even the name alone makes it sound like something we just made up. But the Venezuelan poodle moth is a very real creature. And while you can't take it for a walk or anything like that, it's much exactly what you're expecting. In 2009, Kyrgyzstani zoologist Dr. Arthur Anker happened to spot this unique species living in Venezuela's Canaima National Park. Anker took 75 photos of the creature and later released a handful to the public, creating a viral sensation that saw people embracing and questioning what they were seeing. While some just wanted to adopt the little guy as a pet, many people were convinced He's on my finger, he's so cute! that an animal this unusual had to be some kind of hoax. The lack of information and the fact that no scientists have seen the moth ever since has only made them more convinced that the whole thing is a scheme to get fame. But the scientific community is confident that this is indeed a real animal. The Venezuelan poodle moth is obviously a very unique species, and I'm not sure anybody expected it to be a real thing. But we're through the looking glass now, folks. Myths are real legends are on Twitter. And I have a sandwich. Things are moving fast in our world. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. It's time for the rare topic. Okay, so we don't actually know if this thing even exists, but ancient Greek legend tells us of the echidna, a half-human, half-snake hybrid. Before you roll your eyes, let me tell you that yes, people do claim to have seen this thing. In fact, one story tells of a hiker who was exploring caves in Greece, who happened to encounter the echidna. Naturally, he didn't live to tell the tale, but somehow we heard about it. What do you think? Is this thing really out there somewhere? or is it just somebody going crazy with Greek mythology? Comment down below with the hashtag RareTopic and let us know your opinion about what we just saw. Alright then, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Thorny Devil Austin Powers said it best, Do I make you horny, baby? Well, <laughs> Close enough, I didn't think that impression was that bad. The Thorny Devil is a small Australian lizard that goes by many other names, such as the Mountain Devil, Thorny Lizard, Mullock, and the Thorny Dragon. But they're all pretty accurate. Except for Moloch, which sounds like the name of a lizard who's also a supervillain. The Thorny Devil tends to inhabit the arid scrubland and desert of central Australia. And it really lives up to its name. The top of its body is covered in spikes and scales designed to defend it from predators. But the real genius of this animal's biology can be found on the back of its neck. The Thorny Devil has a spiky false head on the back of its neck, which it presents to potential predators as its real head. These spikes make it very difficult and risky for any predator to consume the thorny devil, as swallowing it could end up with multiple ruptured organs. The thorny devil is generally pretty harmless, assuming you're not out to deliberately provoke it. This species only eats ants and can eat up to 3,000 at a time, so I guess this is a spiky ant killer of legend. We've been expecting you, Sensei. Number 13. Vampire Deer if you're new to the channel, this will be a real game changer for ya. I often speak about how fictional vampire Dracula has been amassing an army of vampire animals in the real world. Well, now we have more proof. May I present to you the vampire deer? Okay, so it's actually a water deer, but it's also known as the vampire deer because of those familiar looking fangs. As far as scientists are aware, the vampire deer is not out to suck anybody's blood, which is something of a blow to my animal 
Tales of the Undead theory, but let's be honest. When you have teeth like this, what else are you gonna do with them? Biologically speaking, the vampire deer is closer to a musk deer than your actual pure deer. With no antlers and those puncture-friendly fangs, these are definitely not the kind of deer you'll see out in the woods. But do they turn into bats? We just don't know. Legend tells of a vampire deer that roams the woods looking for souls to... <laughs> okay, look, the vampire thing didn't work out here, but believe me, it's gonna happen. If these mythical creatures exist, it stands to reason that one of them will be a vampire. Maybe it's the rabbits. Need to look into that. Number 12. Mata Mata. The Lord of the Rings obsessives among us will know that the Mata Mata was the actual filming location for Hobbiton during production of that franchise. But we're talking about the Mata Mata, a turtle. The Mana Mana is a classic Muppet song, but you already knew that. The Mata Mata is a turtle native to South America's Amazon and Orinoco basins. Their natural habitat is among the leaf litter at the bottom of shallow streams, with which they easily blend in. And yeah, they are generally considered to be the weirdest turtle ever. In fact, the turtle's name Mata Mata translates to kill kill in Spanish, which is probably the ancient people's reaction to seeing one of these things. To modern people, however, they're actually pretty cute and funny looking. You could easily believe that this little guy was around millions of years ago, probably around the time Godzilla was roaming the earth. For an animal that looks like a piece of tree and a pile of leaves, the Mata Mata is surprisingly adorable, and like pretty much all turtles, they like just hanging out and doing absolutely nothing. Now, that's a relatable animal. And I have the Muppet song in my head again. Great. Number 11. Glaucus Atlanticus. Okay, I know it sounds like some kind of witchy spell designed to blind the people of Atlantis, but please get your expectations under control. This is a sea slug, and one told of in ancient myth, probably, I'm not familiar with ancient myths. The Glaucus atlanticus is a unique species of sea slug that has to be seen to be believed. With an impressive collection of defense tactics, this is a creature that goes to great lengths to protect itself against potential predators. In one case, the creature will float on its back, showing off its colored underbelly to predators in the air above. The bright blue color is smartly disguised by the ocean waves, meaning those airborne predators can't see anything. Meanwhile, the creature's back is gray and blends in with the sea surface, making it near invisible to predators below. I mean, that's just smart tactics, right? Hiding yourself from both sides. The Glaucus Atlanticus is a lot more than just an invisible slug. When they consume venomous animals like the Portuguese Man o' Wars, the Atlanticus saves up the venom for use when it feels threatened by a predator. I told ya, this guy is smart. You don't want to take on this little dude alone. Number 10, Narwhal. Our planet has spent so long debating the existence of the unicorn that we forget that there is a unicorn living in our oceans. The narwhal is basically the unicorn of the sea, a whale-type animal with a huge horn protruding from its head. Can it grant wishes? I have no idea. But it doesn't mean I wouldn't try. The narwhal can weigh up to 4,200 pounds and can be as long as 17 feet in length. While we don't know a whole lot about the unicorn, I have a feeling it won't come close to either of those measurements. The narwhal spends its life in the Arctic waters of Canada, Greenland, Norway, and Russia. And it's not common for the narwhal to spend up to five months living under sea ice. Well, I guess mythical creatures have to endure some mythical conditions, right? Narwhals mostly tend to feed on fish, like Greenland halibut, arctic and polar cod, squid and shrimp. Basically, if they were capable of living on land, you'd find them at your local all-you-can-eat seafood place. While the unicorn continues to be MIA, the narwhal is about as close as we'll ever get to a mythological horned being anytime soon. So, kids, don't ask for a unicorn for Christmas. Ask for a narwhal. Number 9. Lowland Streaked Tenrek 
You may not know what one of these things is, but it sure sounds like something from Lord of the Rings, doesn't it? The lowland streaked Tenric is an animal not unlike a hedgehog, but you know, more mythical in nature. That's my way of saying you'll probably never see one. The average lowland streaked Tenric measures around 5.5 inches in length, but they have been known to grow up to 6.8 inches. And like hedgehogs, they're covered in black spines that run the length of their body. All of this combined with the yellow stripes along the body serve as a warning to potential predators. Touch me and die. Okay, maybe it's not that extreme, but it's definitely not going to be a fun experience, you know? Actually, there's another reason for those spikes beyond defense. Communication. The movement of these quills causes the tips to rub together, which can create a high-frequency sound. that sound can communicate between a mother and her young, or it can be a warning to predators. Either way, it's pretty cool. The lowland streaked Tenric is probably not going to turn up in your neighborhood anytime soon, but if it does, make a high-pitched noise and see if it speaks to ya. A real-life Dr. Doolittle could make a fortune. Number 8. Bald Wakari there are many species of monkey out there in the world, but none like the bald ukari. Native to South America, the ukari is immediately identifiable thanks to its bald head and bright red face. And yet despite this standout appearance, they're incredibly difficult to find. Ukaris are not like other monkeys. They have surprisingly short tails that cannot be used for grabbing. forcing them to get extra good with their arms and legs. Their bright red face, meanwhile, makes them very attractive to potential mates. Sick or malaria-ridden animals tend to have very pale faces, so essentially these monkeys are among the most practical and virile monkeys anywhere in the world. While they're not aggressive, they are cautious, and that means they prefer to hide away from visitors, earning them that mythical label. Because, as we all know, if you can't find it, it may not exist. The Wakari is a beautiful animal, even if people find it near impossible to locate for themselves. That said, I truly believe that you could find one if you just painted a bald man red and sent him into the forest. I'm sorry, I think it's possible. Number 7. Red-Lipped Batfish Try and tell me you're not curious about this animal after hearing that name. Just try it. You can't. The red-lipped batfish is one of the greatest names for any animal, and it's not hard to see how it could so quickly become mythical, although it goes a little farther than just the name. The red-lipped batfish is one of the most unusual and hard-to-find animals in the world. and it's one of a handful of animals that can only be found in the Galapagos Islands. But boy, is it one of a kind. Typically found at depths of between 30 and 60 feet, the red-lipped batfish is recognizable thanks to its frog-like legs, lipstick red pore, and dangling lure. Once you see one, you'll never forget it. They often don't even swim, preferring to use their legs to do something they would probably describe as walking. To the rest of us, it just looks like they're confused. The red-lipped batfish is one of the most unusual and unique animals in all of the animal kingdom. Very few people will ever witness one of these in person, making it one of the most mythical animals anywhere in the world. Does it have magical powers? Probably. It can walk, that's something. Number 6. Okapi Mythical creatures are, by their very nature, elusive. It doesn't matter how hard you may go looking, you'll probably never encounter them in the wild. The okapi is one of the most elusive animals, a trait not helped by their rapidly dwindling numbers. The okapi is native to the Democratic Republic of Congo, and is one of Earth's oldest mammals. Commonly known as the forest giraffe, the okapi lives and breathes the forest. Unfortunately, out of control deforestation and poaching and other man-made problems have caused a significant decline in the okapi population. In the last 15 years alone, the number of okapi population walking our Earth is believed to have been cut in half. Which means they're fast becoming much more than just mythical, they're approaching legendary status. 
pretty soon they'll be next to impossible to find. Won't somebody please think of the okapi? Like giraffes, the okapi is a beautiful animal. To lose one of the Earth's oldest mammals would be a real shame, even if it does give us another topic for our eventual legendary animals you'll never see list. For now, however, you can chalk this up to just another mythical creature who is still with us. You love to see it, only you don't see it because, uh, mythical. Number five. Superb Bird of Paradise The Superb Bird of Paradise is a small passerine and the only member of the genus Lophorina. Like many birds, the male and females actually have very different coloring. The male is black, green, and a kind of blue, and the female is reddish brown. Did you really need to know that? Probably not, but it's not like you're gonna see one of these while heading to Costco, right? The superb bird of paradise is known for its stunning displays, usually made by the male to one of its mates. Yes, the superb bird of paradise is indeed polygamous, because, of course, it is. Far be it from me to call a bird superb, but it's in the name, so I am forced to do so. What do you think about this incredible bird? Is it really superb, or do you have something to say about this little egomaniac? Let us know in the comments below. Number 4. Golden Tortoise Beetle At first, the name Cheridotella Sexpunctata sounds like some kind of highbrow American pie movie. But no, it's just the scientific name for the golden tortoise beetle, an insect as strange and unique as it sounds. And perhaps most intriguingly, it's not always gold. Despite the name, the golden tortoise beetle can come in a range of colors, from reddish brown to a brilliant, almost mirror-like gold. It all depends on the circumstances. These color changes occur at multiple times in the beetle's life, such as during mating or times of disturbance, like being touched by an unfamiliar being. It's it's not uncommon to see a fully gold beetle turn reddish brown if it's been disturbed by an unexpected presence. Now you can say whatever you want about the sexy name, but you can't tell me that a color-changing tortoise beetle isn't mythical. If JK Rowling had thought of it, you'd probably be seeing it in the movies about the wizard. The golden tortoise beetle is certainly a unique and unforgettable creature. To this day, scientists are pretty clueless about its biology and workings, and I think you all know what that means rampant, unlimited speculation. What do you guys think? I'm guessing it's some kind of orc. Number three, Aardvark. If you ask me, most things in the Bible are mythical creatures, but the Aardvark, you know, the guy that appears first in just about every English language dictionary, is an especially unusual creature unlike any other. And yes, it's mythical. How many aardvarks have you seen? The aardvark is one of the few animals to have an entire scientific order dedicated to itself. In this case, the genus Orcterapus. Many people often assume that the aardvark is somehow related to the anteater, which isn't an unreasonable assumption, but actually the aardvark is totally unrelated to anteaters. They just share a diet of ants, but very few people know that because they have never seen an aardvark aardvark, even though there are many of them out in the world. These animals are shy and nocturnal, meaning that even if people were taking a nighttime safari, they'd still probably hide. The aardvark is a curious creature, and certainly one of the more mysterious in the animal kingdom. Unless you're an expert, or just some strange person who likes to hang out in the wilderness after dark, you'll probably never see one. Unless you're a fan of the cartoon Arthur, obviously. And who isn't? Number 2. Garanuk. The Garanook is much cuter than the name suggests, I can promise you. Actually, this animal is commonly known as Africa's cutest antelope, which sounds about right, also known as the giraffe gazelle. These animals are adorable little guys that will melt your heart, assuming you're lucky enough to see one in person. The Garanook is an animal native to Africa, and is the only member of the genus Lidocranius. Obviously, this animal is most notable for that long, slender neck and limbs, which makes it look almost 
cusp like a baby giraffe. Only this is far, far smaller, measuring between 2 feet 7 inches and 3 and a half feet tall. I think the giraffes can sleep easy. These guys aren't gonna be taking over their turf anytime soon. Unfortunately, the increasing threat of deforestation is causing problems for the Garanook population, with only 95,000 remaining across four countries, so it may become even more mythical, sadly. If you ever see a Garanook, you should consider yourself extremely lucky. As these animals become increasingly rare, it really is like seeing some kind of magical being. It's basically like if Bambi was a giraffe-type animal. And magical. And sing songs about chocolate. Somebody needs to make this a movie. Number 1. Leafy Sea Dragon so it doesn't have the most creative name in the world, but the leafy sea dragon is one of the most ornate and well-camouflaged creatures in the world. And as for the name, well, we'll get to that. But if a sea dragon isn't mythical enough for ya, I don't know what is. The leafy sea dragon is native to the waters off Australia's coast and is closely related to seahorses and pipefish. Their name, meanwhile, comes from the gossamer, leaf-shaped appendage that coat their bodies. These appendages help the dragon to blend in with the seaweed and kelp that surround their native habitat. So that's pretty handy, and I guess the name just makes it more mysterious, right? I mean, the leafy sea dragon just sounds Sounds like a really cool dude who wants to hang out and share his leaves. Who doesn't want to hang out with that guy? Unless you happen to hang out underwater, your chances of seeing a leafy sea dragon up close are pretty low. But don't worry, you'll undoubtedly hear all about the legends of these incredible creatures. After all, they're leafy-tastic. Which of these mythical animals would you most like to see? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.